All right. Um, Ajani, did you want to give it another minute or do you think we should get started? Also, you are muted. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, so we have um, everyone in from the waiting room and captioners and ASLs ready to go. So awesome. you're all set, Abby. All right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for joining. This is Assistive Technology for Gaming. Um, Asian, if you want to go to the next slide. So um, my name is Abby Squires. I um, work here at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. I am our AT specialist for gaming, also for crafting. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm a proud neurodivergent woman. Um, and I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and do my visual description as well for accessibility. Um, I am a white woman of size. I'm wearing a Mars attack shirt and a faded black hoodie. My hair is up in a messy bun. I have glasses and my background is of a somewhat cluttered office. Um, and our chat moderator today is Asian A. Thomas. And did you wanna do a little intro of yourself and a visual description? Sure. Uh, my name is Asian A. Thomas. I am the Youth Assistive Technology Specialist um, for Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. Um, and today I am chat moderating and so feel free to, um, if you have any questions, to put those in the chat and I will make sure that Abby um, sees and aware that you have questions. And I will also um, be adding some of our links and um, different information based off of what Abby is talking about in the chat. Um, my visual description is that I am a woman of color with brown skin. I have um, brown braids and I wear glasses and I also identify as a person with a disability. All right. and. Here at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition on our assistive technology program, um, while the this specific part of the AT program is new, gaming, um, gaming is something that I've always been super passionate about. And before I get too into talking about gaming, I we do need to go over a little bit about our mission, vision, and what the AT program is about. So Asian is gonna give you a little bit of that, and then we can get into gaming. Okay, thanks, Abby. So our um, mission at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition is that we cultivate disability pride and strengthen the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. Our vision is that we envision a world where people with disabilities have space for self-discovery, to cultivate community, and to develop pride. Our program, um, we provide the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. Um, we provide assistive technology AT um, related supports around the state. We are a program that are by people with disabilities for people with disabilities. And we also go out, um, we cover all parts of the state, including the UP. Um, and you can request a demonstration or loan out some of our assistive technology devices. Um, you can do that by calling um, our number, sending an email, or um, filling out a request um, for a demonstration via a form on Google Forms. And I will put that information in the chat. Yep, and uh, just to add a little bit on, um, MATP, we strive to make all that we do as accessible and inclusive as possible. So if for any reason you have trouble with any of the information we present or the way we present the information, we welcome that feedback to improve. Also, um, just kind of note that with our current inventory of devices, we may not include all aspects of the disability experience. For example, we may have some things for individuals with a physical disability and other things might be specific for individuals fit with low vision, um, but we do our best to include everyone, but recognize we may not have devices that are specifically for one population. And for some little bit of housekeeping and questions, um, feel free to unmute and interject with a question you might have or comment. Um, feel free to, you can raise your hand, you can, Type in the chat. If you do Asian A, we'll read that out loud. Um, and then we also will be asking a few questions throughout the session. So 
We encourage that interaction. So please, yeah, unmute or type in the chat. And we have closed captioning available and interpreter as well. So if you need help accessing that, just let us know. All right, so what is assistive technology? Um, HE is any item or piece of equipment, software, app that is used to help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they want to do. Technology makes things easier for everyone and for people with disabilities, AT opens up possibilities. So first question is, when you think of accessible gaming, what comes to mind? And so if, if people are typing or like I said on mute, um, uh, Asian A, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, I know you're not typically a gamer, but uh, <laughs> is there any games or certain consoles that you play or board games? Yes. Yeah, so um, I love to play Mario Kart <laughs> um, with my kids and with my family. And we play that on the Nintendo Switch right now. Um, it's very nostalgic too because like my era was the Nintendo 64. Yes. Um, so now and then my son he plays Pokemon and I used to play Pokemon when I was a kid so like the new graphics and all that stuff I'm like wow like you're really in a whole world <laughs> and I didn't get like you know our screens were kind of like black and white and you know so now he has like all these cool graphics and um the characters are like really clear and cool. Um, but yeah, Mario Kart is like our thing, like playing in all the um, different like worlds and different um, levels and stuff. Like we love nice. to play Mario Kart. Yeah, when you talk about Pokemon, I just think of the Nintendo 64 Pokemon snapshot. <laughs> yeah, and the Game, um, Boy and Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, and if no one has any answers for the accessible game, we'll just move on. And if you do want to type, we can still go back and read that. Okay, if you want to go to the next slide. So some things we're going to cover today is how the lack of accessibility in gaming affects the public health crisis that is social isolation. We're going to go over some accessibility features on consoles, different types of adaptive controllers, and assistive technology for tabletop gaming. And we'll go over a little bit of other things as well. It's more of a brief overview today because um, there's just so much, like just on one of these topics alone, I feel like I could do a two hour presentation. So we're just kind of a brief overview today. Um, and then I think someone just typed in the chat, Asian, if you wanna. Yep, so Jordan said, um, I can't remember all the options, but I remember being impressed by the number of accessibility options I saw offered for Far Cry 6 on PS4. Yes, um, I feel like there's a lot of really cool um, accessibility features, especially in The Last of Us 2 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla um, and uh, Marvel Spider-Man, the newer one, um, was super accessible. It was really, it was great. I think it won a lot of awards too. Um, and actually, that kind of goes into the next question. I already asked Asia Nay this, but I wanted to ask everyone here, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, what console do you play on or do you play on PC? Do you have a favorite game, whether it be a video game, board game, or card game, RPG? Um, yeah, you can, like I said, type in the chat or um, unmute. Yep, someone's at PC, PlayStation, Tyler. Nice. I am a PlayStation person as well. I use my PS4 every day. Um, I don't have a PS5 yet. Um, and I wish I had a PC, but I do not have a decent enough PC to run any games. PC and TTRPGs. Nice. I mean, D&D mean. &D on PC, otherwise PS4, Jordan. Nice. Um, Jalisa loves to play Candyland with her daughter. <laughs> yes, put some shoots and ladders in there. Um, oh. Favorite game is Last of Us 2. It is so good. I agree with you, Tyler. Uh, and the first Last of Us, I thought was amazing, but the Last of Us 2, the accessibility features, chef kiss. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Um, and then we can go into the next one. And if still, if someone wants to chime in with their favorite game, go, go for it. Um, so with social, social isolation, um, it affects 
or gaming affects social isolation a lot. So um, just some like quotes and stats that I found from able gamers, 35 to 45% of people with disabilities were profoundly socialized, socially isolated even before COVID. And it was just way worse once COVID hit. Um, and also research on digital games have shown that they contribute to higher levels of well-being, less depression, and less negative effects amongst older adults. And so while going to an arcade or a gaming meetup is really good for combating social isolation, it's not always an option. So like there are multiple barriers such as like transportation or lack of supports or being a higher risk of COVID-19 and some spaces might even have physical barriers that are not accessible. Um, so that's where, where online gaming comes in. Um, they help allow individuals to connect with family and people who have similar interests like my brother is in the Marines and he's over in California right now. And that's a way that we keep in contact and talk the most is either play games together or he has a PC and he streams a lot on Twitch. So I'll watch him on Twitch and talk via Twitch and moderate his chat sometimes. And that's been super great and we love that. Um, and it helps to create an amazing support network and foster lifelong friendships, which has a really amazing impact on one's well being. Um, I think back in like 2011, I met um, some people when I was playing ESO, and I'm still friends with them today. They were a huge support system. I think they were helped me out the most when my mom passed away. Um, and I would have never met them otherwise. There is, um, my friends are in Australia and Dubai and Louisiana, um, and I would have never met them if it wasn't for online gaming. And then also, like even with some of the advances in accessibility in the gaming community, a lot of gamers with disabilities still feel excluded because some consoles and games and equipment still lack a lot of accessibility features. Um, which is why accessibility, in my opinion, needs to be, needs to stop being an afterthought for developers and needs to start being part of the process from like the very beginning. Um, and I do have a quote that I didn't put on there and I'll get to the next slide, I'm sorry. Um, someone, um, a man who served in the Navy and was, ended up uh, being injured in a quadriplegic, he said that he, loves online gaming because it provides him with the distraction from his physical pain and engages him socially. His quote says, I primarily use it as a distraction from chronic pain because I have neuropathic pain in the lower part of my body and it feels like my limbs are on fire. The more that I'm totally distracted or immersed in a game, the more that pain tends to go away. So just another way of how it's positively impacts people. And so some types of accessibility features on consoles um, I was go originally going to do individual consoles, but um, there is just so many, so much overlap. So a lot of consoles have like narration, um, magnifiers and zoom features, high contrast or colorblind options, closed captionings, um, some voice to text, um, button remapping, and if um, some of you might not be familiar with uh, remapping. Uh, that allows players to choose um, what assistive aid they make. They will make like the character jump or run or pick up items without having to um, rely on the default settings. So if the like right trigger button is um, not accessible to you, you can remap it so it ends up being triangle, which is accessible, um, which is super helpful and not all games have that, but some do, which is, which is nice. And something to mention about um, Xbox, they have a lot more features than others. I feel like they have um, something called Copilot, which is really cool because it's, you can connect one controller to another. And that helps because you don't need to, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It makes it easier. So if using 
both hands is an issue or you only have um, use of your, your right arm and you can only use half the controller, someone else like a friend or family member can like control the moving around and looking or the jumping. And so you can play together as one person, but it, it's also helpful for even like just playing as one person. So you could be using the right side of the controller and then the connected co-pilot one you could have on the ground and use your foot to help move around. So I just thought that was really an awesome feature and I wanted to include that in here. And Xbox also has made it really easy to find games in their, um, their store. So they have um, accessibility tags. And so people can go through and check to make sure the game they wanna get has the accessibility features they need. Um, so um, they can make a decision if they wanna purchase that game or not. And I haven't checked in a minute, but PlayStation, um, they don't really, they had an accessibility tab. I'm not sure if they still do, but it had like a list of games, but it didn't list any of the actual accessibility features in the game. So I didn't find that super helpful. But I mean, I guess they're trying. Um, <laughs> but I think PlayStation can come a little farther. And I feel like Switch is starting to get a little bit better. Um, but again, I feel like it's no match for Xbox right now. And then we can go on to the controllers. So there are a lot of different controllers, more than what I have um, pictured here. But there are a lot of 3D printed adaptions um, and ways that you can access that. You can purchase some online, or you can even go to like a local library or college campus. And soon you can come here while well, we're getting a 3D printer. Um, and some locations might just make you pay for the filament or labor to make it. But that's a really... Um, it's just a fun way, I feel like, to obtain adaptations for your controllers. And then, so in the middle there, that's a switch controller, the Joy-Con, um, and you can place that inside this controller so it makes it a steering wheel. So it's uh, easier to play, I feel like, um, Mario Kart and things like that. And they have a lot of other um, controllers that you can insert the Joy-Cons to to make it easier. And they have something called a pro controller that um, it kind of looks like an Xbox controller. Um, and that makes it, um, if you're used to like Xbox PlayStation controllers, I find those a lot easier because the joy cons are just so small. Um, and there's a lot of sites that I'm gonna include on the resource uh, guide that you can check out and purchase and um, accessible adaptive controllers also a bunch of 3D printing blueprints. Um, so if you have a 3D printer, you can print them yourself. All right. and have, you, have you heard of the controllerproject.com? Yeah. yeah. Tyler um, put that in the chat. He oh, okay. A great place to find controller modifications. Yeah, that's, um, that's one that I put on my list, but I actually didn't go through and look at it just yet because I just found that, I think last week. Um, but there's a lot of other ones like broadenhorizons.com, evil controllers, um, scuff gaming, thingiverse. Um, and I think there's some more too that I'm gonna have included. Um, and oh, I wasn't doing descriptions of the images. Um, so the top one is of the Xbox accessible controller, which is like a white tri or triangle, sorry, a white rectangle with two large black circles and a black directional pad. Um, it looks like a cross kind of. And then on the bottom left, there is a white PlayStation 5 controller with a 3D adaption on it, um, 3D printed adaption. And then in the middle, there was two steering wheels with a red and a blue Joy-Con um, in each one. And then there is a 3D printed adaption in the bottom right corner with a black, PlayStation 4 controller. And that one's pretty cool. It attaches to both of the Joy-Con or Joy-Cons, the <laughs> thumbsticks, and it makes it like a little mini steering wheel. Um, and then you can go on to the next slide. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Xbox controller. So it was designed primarily to meet the needs of gamers with limited mobility. 
And with a ridiculous amount of inputs, there's 19, which I thought was just amazing. Um, you can use a variety of different buttons, switches, foot pedals, joysticks, and more. And um, they have the ability of having three different user profiles. And so that can be for different people, but uh, I think it's mostly used for um, different setups for different games. So like for a first person shooter, you wouldn't use the same controls as you would like a racing game. Um, and that just makes it easier when you want to switch games so you can just change the profile. Um, you can go on, wait, I lied, don't go on to the next slide. Um, so there's also adapters that you can use that I don't go into great detail about, but I do have um, resources on there, but they are USB devices that allow you to use um, your favorite adaptive controller with other gaming systems like the PS4, Xbox One, PS3, the 360, even your PlayStation TV, PC, and the Wii. Because um, I think Xbox uh, really um, says that it's only for Xbox and sometimes PC, but it can um, you can use adapters to make it work for anything you need. And then you can go ahead to the next slide. So some switches, pedals, and joysticks. Um, this is not all that's out there. There's a lot more, but this is just a few things. So there is the 3D rudder on the bottom left. Um, the image is of feet on top of a black disc with uh, red pads on it. And so that allows 360 movement um, and it's with use of your feet. So if you don't have, um, if you have limited mobility or um, no mobility with your hands or arms, um, there's, you can move forward, backwards, left, right, up, down, rotate. Um, and then we have next to that is the string switch. And nope, that is not the string switch. That is actually the handle based thumbstick in the middle there. So it's a, image of the Xbox accessible controller in the background with the Xbox controller. And then underneath there is a square with a joist or a joystick sticking out. And what that does is it allows you to operate both of the thumbsticks by using only your right hand or just your left hand. The handle base includes um, an adhesive to attach it. So you can stick that on and what I've seen um, some users do is they use that um, joystick on their leg on the bottom there, and then they use the other one with their hand. Um, next to that is actually the string switch, and that is a small black box with a string attached to it. And that one, it is, you can pull the string and it provides like an audible click and smooth tactile feedback. And so that's just another way of or another option than using a button or um, or other types of switches. And then above that is the arcade fighting stick, which is really cool. It's just like a plug and play and you can use it on virtually like everything. Um, and it's super easy to set up. Um, and Evil controllers actually, they partnered with Able Gamers um, to create the this uh, the handle based thumbstick and other adaptations to controllers, and they're just a really awesome and site. They have super customizable controllers, so I would check them out. And you can go to the next slide. All right, so this is just more about switches. Um, the top left image is of a white man in a power chair. And there's a red and a green switch on either side of his headrest. And so he uses that for, um, for as alternative buttons. And some people use their elbows, some people use their chin, whatever works for you. Um, anything is really possible if like, you can use your feet, you, there's bite switches. Um, there are the micro light switch is, it's very sensitive. So it doesn't um, require a lot of pressure. 
there is something called a grasp switch, which just looks kind of like a kind of like a long microphone, or it's just like a black tube shape. And what you can do with that is you can either squeeze it or you can pinch it, and that works as a um, a switch as well. And you can go on to the next slide. All right, so grips and thumbsticks and miscellaneous. Um, so for this one, the thumbsticks uh, on the bottom right image, they're purple and they have a tactile design on them. And there's also the grip on each of the uh, handles of the controller. So what the thumbsticks do is that they um, provide sensory input and they also have concave or convex um, design and sometimes you can get them a hybrid so one joystick can be uh, concave the other one can be convex um, and there is different heights that you can have as well so there's the low medium high and this allows uh, increased control and the grips uh, have a certain material that helps with grip, but also it helps with um, airflow to keep your hands cool and not all sweaty. And it's a foam kind of material. It's like a rubbery foam. And it feels like memory foam kind of, and it's just easier um, on your hands as well. And the precision rings, which I did not know about until recently, are pretty cool. So they help by letting you use less force. So that means less work for the muscles of your wrist, hand, and thumb, increasing comfort. And the harder you push on the thumbsticks, the more the material's going to cushion, to um, cushion your stick making so you have more accurate shots, even at high or max in game sensitivity. They're also like super stretchy and um, all of their products are antimicrobial and you can reuse them. Um, also with the, the grips, so they are attached by adhesive, but it allows you to remove them and reposition them without leaving like a gross sticky residue. Um, also with the precision rings up in the top left corner, those also make it, it dampens the sound, so it makes it really quiet. So if, um, for sensory reasons, like if, sound is an issue, it helps with that clicking sound when you're using the thumbsticks. And also the Control Freaks is who creates these. They have all of these available for PS4, PS5, the Switch Pro controller, and the Xbox S, X, and One. All right, and then we're going to move on to some Dungeons and Dragons. So with Dungeons and Dragons, there are some really cool accessibility character sheets. So they have disability friendly, large font. Um, and I have um, some downloads because um, I need to find the site because I'll put that on the resource guide, but you can download them for free. And if you're interested in them, just shoot me an email and I can send those to you. They also have um, high contrast and tactile dice, which I'm gonna go over the dice uh, in more detail in the next slide. Um, also D&D sites. So um, when I play D&D, I use um, D&D and Beyond, which I love. They also have a similar site, uh, Roll20. Um, and so what D&D and Beyond kind of provides, it gives you access to basic rules of the game, um, the uh, character builder, and then there's the digital character sheet. Um, and it has integrated dice rolling, uh, which is super nice. And it just looks cool. You can collect different colors and designs of dice. Um, so if you needed to roll like five D20, you can just like click the D20, go up to five, roll it and it shows it rolling on the screen. And something super nice is it adds like your modifiers to it automatically, so you don't have to calculate that. And to prevent cheating, it shows up in the chat 
um, what you've rolled so everyone can see it. Um, and it also, they, um, like Roll20 also has encounter builders and interactive monster stats, searchable st spells. Um, it also helps with like tracking your inventory and it even shows like if you've been poisoned and how long the effects last and it'll, ooh, fantasy grounds. I didn't know about that one, Eileen. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> but um, it helps with, yeah, like tracking your items. And also you can click on like a short rest or long rest and it does that for you and redoes your stats. And then, and so like the aim of that is just to get more from the game and it just has so many different tools and resources. All right, dice. So there are digital dice apps that you can download from the Google Play Store or um, the Apple Store. And sorry, Asian, I know you're supposed to read the chat, but I have it up. Yeah. So I saw that Jordan <laughs> said, I haven't done it personally, but the Discord app has bots you can use to roll to what? I didn't know Discord had that. Um, oh, and speaking of Discord, we're uh, our social media a guy, Nick, and I are trying to work on creating a Discord group for inclusive gaming. So look out for that. Um, and some other uh, dice, there's tactile dice. And tactile dice is different than braille dice by, it just has the raised um, like one, two, three. And also they have tactile dice with like the actual numbers written out, but you can feel what it is. But then the Braille dice is actually in Braille and a lot of those are 3D printed. Um, and then there's also large print and high contrast dice, which is super helpful with low vision. And something I never actually had myself, but I think is super cool are the dice towers. So if like shaking and rolling the dice um, isn't that accessible or they end up going everywhere and falling on the ground, you can just set them in the top of the dice tower and then it rolls down and rolls for you. And I feel like uh, with my neurodivergent, I feel like it also helps because sometimes when I roll, I'm like, and I get like a bad roll, I'll be like, oh, I like I shook them wrong or I rolled them wrong. And so really when you do this, it's like, it's up to the dice tower. It's not something that you did wrong. And I know that might sound silly, but <laughs> it helps me. Um, and also something that's super cool that I just recently found out, you can ask Google or Siri to roll dice for you. Um, I'll do that on my phone right now. So you can say, hey, Google, roll 5D20. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of. What, 18, 8, 13, 3, and 14. That makes 56. Um, and I thought that was super cool. And it can also like flip a coin and that kind of stuff as well. And I haven't tried it with an iPhone, but I was told that it works with that as well. Um, all right, and then we can go on to the next. So card games. Um, there are things like an automatic shuffler that makes it easier um, to shuffle cards. And we have the top right one, which is a blue um, device that you can set your cards in. And it's just one row, but it's still super helpful if holding the cards is difficult. Um, and then in the middle on the bottom, it's another design and it has like three tiers. So you can put a lot more cards on there and it makes it easier to see each row. Um, also large print, uh, large print playing cards. And then there's also a lot of large print for like low vision, like bingo, there's large print boggle in a lot of other games. Um, and the large print just helps by less eye strain and just makes it more visible. And something that there's no pictures of on here, but there's a lot of um, braille games. Um, they have 
feral kits for games that you can purchase, like for Settlers of Catan, all the rules, everything, even like the little hexagon things are all in Braille, which is really cool. And they have it for like Uno and Monopoly, chess, checkers, bingo, dominoes, um, virtually like almost all the games you can think of. Um, all right, and then, so because it was a pretty brief overview, um, if you did want more in-depth information on, I listed a lot of things on there, um, feel free to um, reach out. Also in the survey, I believe there's a text box where you can put um, what you might wanna see more on. Um, I'm already planning on doing a D&D &D alone, like just by itself, because I, I have so much more I can talk about with that. Um, so yeah, with that one, feel free. Oh, thank you, Asian. I put my email in the chat. Um, all right, and then you can go to the next slide. Um, so, um, I went through it pretty fast. I talked super fast and I apologize to the interpreter and captioner, but um, that actually leaves me time to possibly play a YouTube video um, that shows the accessible controller. And it has Zach Anner in it, which I think he's hilarious and I like him a lot. Um, so actually I will bring that up. And we can watch that and then I can start to end it. Oh, I see Jonah. Hi there, sorry for the awkward timing of this question. I'm driving, hoping you can get to it eventually. I run a video game collection at an academic library and I'm considering a student project that would test games for accessibility features and compile lists per games. Does it allow active, oh, activate subtitles um, before the intro? Can the subtitles be adjusted? Detailed descriptions of how the multiplayer works. I love that. Um, the question is which websites or other repositories such as can I play that? I'm so glad you asked that actually because I do have um, a list of similar um, on similar sites on my resource guide, but I don't have that up right now. But there are other sites like um, dagger system there's one for um like family games that you can look up um games by accessibility features um and i think there's a couple other ones and some of them i feel like are really convoluted and kind of hard to navigate um and Let's see. But yeah, like a lot of games, like you said, with like the activate subtitles and all that, there are some that um, you can change like the subtitles. So you can change the uh, font, you can change the size and if it's bold or not, or if it's high contrast. Um, and you can skip them all together. There's also um, in, I think it's in Marvel Spider-Man, there's a really cool accessibility feature where some of the things you have to alter, alternate buttons really fast or just like button smash in order to do something, which and depending on how fast it is, it's like the better in the game. And that can be really difficult for some people. So it gives you the option to turn that off. Oh, nice, Tyler. Uh, yeah, oh, gaming accessibility, Next, Nexus, uh, Dagger System, Accessible Games Database, Can I Play That, Game Access Info. Nice, thank you, Tyler. And I know you said you were driving, Jonah, so I'll, if any of those aren't on my list, I will make sure they're on the resource list, and I will credit you, Tyler. <laughs> um, no, no need, you probably got them all in there, I just figured, <laughs> just in case. Yeah, I don't know if I have the uh, accessibility nexus one, so I think that one might be new for me. Yeah. So thank you. Finding ratings on games and stuff like that has definitely been something that is a roadblock for a lot of 
users and definitely something I've ran into as well. So, I mean, yeah, and it's definitely hard to, it's hard to gauge too, because I mean, it depends on how many inputs you have available and stuff too, right? It's not really a, a one rating. Sometimes that's difficult, but um, yeah, definitely exactly. nice to see what accessibility options are in games before they're launched, because you don't want to buy an $80 game and then realize that it doesn't work for you, right? Exactly. And I feel like some of the reviews aren't done um, by multiple different people with different disabilities. So it really, it's, it's hard to trust certain reviews, but um, it's better than nothing. And let's see, sorry. Um, oh, there's also one that I found that has a list of a list of games that talk about if they're accessible for low vision or blind. And also they have a lot of reviews for some of the Braille games. Um, so, and that one's also on the resource guide. And yeah, I'm gonna look up that video. Zach. All right. So this is um, Zach Anner, and it's him testing out the accessibility controller. And it's a five minute video, so I feel like that's perfect. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And make sure I share sound. All right. Okay, and um, let me know if it, you can hear it all right. And we are here at the Microsoft Lounge to no, check out their that. new adaptive controller. Yeah. This controller allows any variety of gamers with any ability to play the way that they want to play. But these two big buttons, they can be programmed as anything on the controller. Right now they're at A and B. My first thought was, man, I would have loved having this as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah! I won. I won both games. I'm amazing. And my second thought was, I want to beat Josh Flanagan playing video games. Josh and I met in college and we immediately became best friends. He has carried me up mountains. He is the Thelma to my Louise. That analogy doesn't work at all. I've got a pretty solid 34 years of gaming under my belt. I'm really interested today to see how far Zach's less than one day of gaming stacks up to that. If I can just get to that level immediately, then I'll be satisfied. Park, a loser approaches. Joshua? Yeah? You ready to be beaten? I'm ready. You're looking pathetic today. Thank you. You're gonna regret this. If I can't win after training for 15 minutes, then what am I doing? You know who else had 15 minutes of training? Neil Armstrong. And he drove to the moon. Ready? Yeah. 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 Whoa! Okay, so you're beating me a little, but I'm just getting wound up. This is, this, is, this is more even than I thought it would be. I was immediately taken aback by how good I was. I was actually pretty impressed. He was he was getting some punches in, but uh, you know, he was still awful. Uh, no, stop it. Oh, this is so many. Wait, you didn't win, did you? Yeah, I did. That went by so fast. <laughs> Got got a few few jabs in, but at the end of the day, Zach is he's new to this. He's a, he's a baby, and uh, you know what's the first thing you do to a baby? You spank it. I can't spin that. That sucks. I hope you get diarrhea and it never stops. Too late. You can lead a gamer to an adaptive controller, but you can't make him win. Good. Mm. Huh. Put that on the box. Most people would be glad to get 15 minutes of fame 
uh, much less 15 minutes of practice, and Zach has squandered both. I know what I have to do. I gotta go to the kitchen and get a snack. I was losing, so I needed to take things to the next level with a little anti-adaptive technology. Otherwise known as sabotage. Okay, well, I think I'm ready to play again. your standard sabotage package for Josh. Hit him with the darts! Ah. Hanging him upside down. Ah. Shot him with darts. What's inside the mind of someone like that? Bubbles! I think I'm gonna stop it right there. I'll provide the link for the rest of it in the resource guide as well. And Zach Ganner is a comedian with cerebral palsy and he does a lot of videos um, about accessibility, um, there's one that he's like on the search for the rainbow bagel in New York, and he talks about how like inaccessible a lot of the and how many physical barriers to get to the bagel shop. Um, and then, Asian, if you want to share um, the presentation again. Then you can hit the next again, because I think it this one pops up. Okay, so thank you for attending our AT for Gaming. Um, what's that? You want a demo? Um, so what we do is we provide individualized meetings with um, our AT specialists and you can review and test out different products, compare and contrast them to see what works best for you. Um, we have a phone number you can call, you can email me directly, there's a Google form even you can fill out. Um, and then if you want to hit enter one more time, I forgot. Oh. Okay, oh yeah. <laughs> what? You're super excited to fill out our survey? Um, Asian is going to put our survey link in the chat and any feedback would be appreciated and let me know what else you want to see um, any future presentations. I know I didn't go super in depth with a lot of things, but I would love to. So let me know what you might want to see next. Um, and then if you want to go to the next slide, I'm going to just talk about how we just created or like, is there any inclusive gaming groups? Why? Yes. Yes, there is. I'm so glad you asked. Um, we just created an uh, inclusive gaming uh, Facebook group. Uh, the link will be in the resource guide. And um, Asiany, I don't think I sent you the link, but if you want to put that in the chat. Um, so what we do on there is we um, we share different um, accessibility features and games. We just talk about our personal experiences. Um, and it's not just about multiplayer, like single player games too, like like The Last of Us and like Limbo, which is a platform game and you can connect with other gamers and talk about games that you love and um, share like your gaming setup too, because um, it's awesome to see different um, setups, especially with adaptive equipment. So then you can also get ideas of what might work for you better than what you might already have set up. Um, and we share streamer names. So if you have like a Twitch or you stream on YouTube or Facebook Live, um, we encourage the promotion of that and promotion of events that might be nearby that people can attend, whether it be in person or virtual. Um, so yeah, please feel free to join. Um, and if anyone has any questions or comments, we have about eight minutes left. So feel free to um, ask questions. Um, if not, I hope everyone has a ridiculously good day and we can end a little early, but um, we'll wait a couple minutes and see if anyone has questions. And again, feel free to unmute. And actually, Tyler, I did have a question for you with Makers Making Change, because I know, um, I believe there is makers making change in like every state as well. 
Um, could you actually talk a little bit about um, what it is that Makers Making Change does? Yeah, yeah, for sure, of course. Um, yeah, so we're a nonprofit uh, based out of Canada, but uh, like you mentioned, all our designs for all our stuff are open source and online, so they're available you know, worldwide. Um, so all the designs are focused around assistive technology. Um, so you mentioned switches. Uh, so we have 3D printed versions of switches that uh, the user will only pay the material cost of what that is for the volunteer who's going to make it. So traditionally, switches can be in the you know, 60 to 100, sometimes even $200 range. Um, and then just the cost of materials for our switches are in that like $5 to $10 range for those. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, in the US, uh, we have chapter volunteer leaders all across the country. Um, so if you, I'll, I'll put a link in the chat right now to our website, but if you go on the assistive technology devices tab, and if you find something that might work for you or something that you want to try out, you can just hit request and someone in your area will volunteer and help build it. Um, and then if you don't find something that is, if you find something that, you know, you're looking for something that isn't on the website, you don't see it, you can submit an idea as well. And then some of our volunteers are designers and they'll take that and uh, create it you know, work with you to, to create it for you. Um, and then the adaptive gaming side, what I'm working on right now is um, very similar to some of the stuff that you were talking about in, in a meeting like this, where we have like kind of that introduction to video games and an introduction to adaptive technology. There can be a lot of barriers there for people that uh, just to get into adaptive gaming and the tech's quite expensive and that kind of thing. So we're creating resources that are specifically focused uh, just around the introduction to gaming just around like how do you go from not having whatever you have at home and then adapting that into something that would be functional and like the lowest cost um, possible. So I appreciate yeah, you giving of, this talk and lots of great information. Thank you. And I'm glad you brought up some of that because yeah, there's a lot of DIY setups that you can do. And um, there's a book, it's not just about gaming, but it is a uh, book by Teresa Wilcom, I believe her name is, and it's a whole book about ways you can make AT um, it, at, with things just around your house. And like Makers Making Change, um, in every single state, there is an AT program. And that's another thing. If you want to reach out and um, we can help you locate the AT program in your state. Um, and also, like you said, AT can get really expensive. So that's another reason why um, like we like to be able to provide demonstrations and even short-term loans um, so people can test out these items and before they purchase them because buying something that's super expensive and then not being able to use it, um, it's a real bummer. Uh, and there are also resources for um, for funding as well. Um, there's a lot of sites like Able Gamers and Special Effects Gamings in the UK, uh, Warfighter Engaged. Um, uh, there's a few others too that um, help with funding and also some local center for independent livings might have funding as well. Um, and I think that about covers it. Um, and I know I said it like 80 times, but please let me know um, what most interests you on hearing next, because I would love to put together a presentation about that so I can get more in depth. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining. I hope you all have a great day. And Tyler also added a video of some of the gaming work that they've done. Oh, nice. To blink. And all of the stuff you put in the chat, Tyler, I'll add that to the resource guide so everyone can have that. Yeah, I'll, I'll put my email in there too if you if you ever need any yeah, of that stuff. I, I can share that out for sure. I know I already wrote down your name and I was going to look up your email from the registrations to reach out. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, Everyone, you're free to go. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining everyone. Um, I did put the link to our survey um, to kind of give us feedback and also to let Abby know um, if there's any other gaming AT that you're interested in.
interested in, or just in general to let our team know if there's any other um, assistive technology categories that you're interested in learning more about. Thanks, Jonah. <laughs> thank you for joining. Yes, and thank you, Tyler, for um, adding so much to the presentation. It was really appreciated. And, and someone did just ask in the chat to provide the link of the Zach video. Um, and uh, I did send that to them directly, but also I'll put that in the chat for everyone. But I will also include that in the resource guide, which I'm going to add some more things to it. And that and the recording of this um, will probably be sent out uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, perfect. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, well, thank you so much for let me let me talk about makers making change too. Appreciate that and and every, anything. Uh, I think there's lots of good collaboration pieces here too. So I'll reach out to you guys and um, on on Instagram. I think you, I think that's why I found found this. I'll reach out there and maybe we can, we can communicate there. But uh, but yeah, have a great rest of your guys' day and thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye. Have a good day.